So today is kind of a hot, humid summer day here in Minnesota, and I thought I would just do kind of a simple video today. Something that I think would just be helpful in that we all sometimes have thoughts that run through our heads as we declutter. I know I certainly do. And sometimes these thoughts are really, really helpful in getting us motivated to declutter more. But other times, there are things that we just say to ourselves that aren't true, that might make it genuinely harder to get rid of the stuff that we're trying to declutter. I will say, of course, some of these are a little up for debate as far as whether they technically meet the criteria for a lie, but I definitely think that they're kind of like untruths that we're telling ourselves that keep us from getting to our real goals toward minimalism. And I kind of think if we can just identify those thoughts and recognize that that is a pattern and sort of a trap that we fall into, then when it's running through our head, we can catch it and decide, I don't have to listen to that thought. I don't have to believe that thought. It might not even be true and decide to do something else based on our bigger picture values and what we care about. These are also all lies that I have told myself. So I definitely have empathy for if you're experiencing this, but I thought I would just share some common lies that I think a lot of us tell ourselves about our clutter. The first lie we tell ourselves is, I'm finally going to start using this. The idea that as you go through your stuff while you're decluttering, you come across an item that maybe you really, really like or enjoy, or maybe it's even something that's useful to you, but you haven't used it in a long time and you realize, oh wow, I should really use this. And you convince yourself, I'm gonna use it more. Now that I've come across it, now that I've been reminded of this item, I'm gonna use it a whole lot more. But I can tell you from experience, that especially if you think about it from the long-term perspective, this is rarely really true. Even if you end up using it a couple times because you're reminded of that item, often you'll end up forgetting about it again. Usually there's a reason why you've forgotten about it. And even if that reason is I have too much stuff and it was packed away and I never remembered it, if you're not able to let go of some of that stuff that's creating this huge pile of stuff that's hard to ever find, then you're still gonna have the problem and you're never gonna use that item. I definitely remember in a recent kitchen declutter I did, I came across some spatulas that I thought, oh, I used to like these spatulas. I should keep them and start using them more. And so I put them in a more easily accessible place and I maybe use them again once or maybe twice, but then I never reached for them again because I had enough of other tools for cooking. And so I realized it's just not worth it. Also, one last point I wanna make about this lie is that even if it's true, even if, okay, you're gonna start using this item more, let's say that you're right about that, then it comes back to that question, is it really worth keeping this item? Like, will that use really meaningfully change the quality of your life? Probably not in most cases. So even if you think you might use it more, is it really worth keeping? The second lie we tell ourselves is that it's wasteful to get rid of this. And it is true, waste and garbage is a real problem on this planet and we need to be conscientious of that. But to me, the wastefulness probably already happened. And that was when you first acquired the item. Now, I also think as we get rid of things, of course, we can be thoughtful about how we're getting rid of them. Maybe we can resell the item so that it truly has a second life. I do have a video about selling things on Poshmark. If you're interested, I'll link it up here, as well as recycling recycling or re-gifting or donating. I also realized though, even with donations, sometimes the stuff we donate doesn't really get used again. And so I do wanna acknowledge maybe at some point there is a level of waste that isn't good for the planet. But the reality is also eventually all our stuff will be gotten rid of. And perhaps it's even after our deaths and perhaps it's left to somebody else to deal with. And so for you to get rid of it now versus later, doesn't mean you're more wasteful. I think the way we can decide to be less wasteful is to be really thoughtful about what we're bringing into our life in the future and try to reduce our consumption of stuff because then in the long run, we're getting rid of less. The third lie we tell ourselves is that if I get more use out of this, something good will happen. Either I'll feel better or I'll be treating the earth better if I get more use out of this item. And to a certain extent, that's true. Like if you throw away a bottle of shampoo that still has half the bottle full, maybe you could use that shampoo. So obviously you have to apply it 
appropriate to the situation, but in most cases, if it's just an item that ultimately you're going to have to throw out or get rid of at some point anyway, you're not actually helping the earth just by keeping it longer. And realistically, it's also not gonna really make you feel better because when that item is around, every time you pass it, it's kind of reminding you of something you have to do and something you have to deal with, whether it's to fix the item or clean the item or store the item or put it in its place, it's telling you something that you have to do. This is a principle I actually got from the book Goodbye Things, such a good book. And so if we can just reduce the number of items, I think ultimately we'll be happier. And if you're on a journey towards minimalism or at least doing a bunch of declutters, clearly you're doing it for a reason. Clearly the stuff around you has caused stress in your life. And maybe you wanna spend more of your time with your family or doing something constructive or doing something fun or meaningful to you. And there's a reason why you're pursuing it. Ultimately, I think a lot of it is for your own happiness and sense of well-being. And so if you're telling yourself that keeping this item around is gonna make you happier or feel better or less guilty because you kept it longer, I don't think that's really true because ultimately in the long run, it's gonna make you feel worse. Maybe in the short run, you might feel a little less guilt in that moment during the declutter, but in the long run, you're creating more chaos in your home and it just creates more stress. The fourth lie that we tell ourselves is, but I paid so much for it, it's not smart to throw it away. And you know, this is kind of like a classic sunk cost fallacy, where if we spent a bunch of money on something, we're more likely to spend more money on it or more time or more energy because we already spent that money and somehow we feel invested and we want to make a success out of what we've done in the past. But the reality is you've already spent that money, the money is gone, and keeping it around for longer isn't gonna make that money back. It's just not gonna make that mistake any better. And so if you can truly divorce yourself from the idea that keeping this thing around will make it have more value, if you can let go of that idea and just accept, you know, what's done is done, and maybe I shouldn't have bought this, but that's okay, and be willing to let go of it, I think it can be a really positive thing, especially in the case that you might be able to sell the item and actually make some money back. The sunk cost fallacy is definitely a trap I've fallen into many times as far as the decluttering process, and I think just reminding myself that that's a phenomenon that often happens for me helps me get over it in the moment and not fall into that trap. The next lie we tell ourselves is that I'd be a bad friend if I got rid of this. Often I find myself feeling really guilty at times where I'm considering getting rid of items that were once gifts, something that someone picked out just for me, put thought into, effort into, maybe money into. It makes it really difficult to let go of those things because I kind of feel like if I value the relationship, I should keep this item and really cherish it. But I think this is what it comes down to, remembering that the object is not the person. And that object does not represent how much we care about this person. What really matters is what we do to be there for the people in our lives, how much we appreciate them and show them our appreciation. I don't think that keeping objects around just to prove to ourselves that we care about that person is worth it. Now, I definitely think that there's value placed on gifts. And it's true, there might be people in our lives that check up on the gifts that they've given us and how much we like them. That's where this comes down to figuring out a balance because I do get it. I kind of feel like there is some kind of like bonding thing. So when I get a gift, I do try to find meaning in it. I do try to find use out of it. But ultimately, I'm saying in the long run, if you're just keeping something around for months and years that you genuinely don't use, I don't think that person would want you to feel the guilt just to keep that around. And even if they would, this is where it comes down to, you have to prioritize your own values and meaning in life. And you can navigate that friendship or that relationship if you need to. Maybe there's an opportunity to remind that friend or person how much you care about them in some other way. I also think too, that showing your appreciation for a gift that you really do like at the beginning can be really meaningful because then they feel that sense of like good from that gift giving. But then also I think at other times, not when they're giving you gifts, you can also start to tell people about your pursuit of minimalism and that maybe you're looking for fewer gifts in general, but really communicating with the people in your life about 
your approach and what you're trying to do as far as your stuff. I do think some just genuine open communication can often solve a lot of these problems. And ultimately, if there's somebody in your life that's just gonna keep giving you gifts anyway, at a certain point, what can you do about it? Just enjoy the ones you can and accept that you have more important priorities or values than keeping all the gifts all the time. The last lie that we tell ourselves in decluttering that I wanna mention is that if I keep this item, it won't make a difference in the grand scheme of things. I've just found that's not true because what I've realized is that I keep telling this lie to myself over and over and over again, and I keep making exceptions repeatedly to the point that I end up having a huge pile of stuff that I had hoped to declutter. And so I do think that each individual decision does really matter, and that if we're really on the edge, if we really are kind of teetering on whether keep something or not, just getting rid of it might be the right decision. And I say this because it wasn't until I started getting rid of a higher percentage of my stuff during declutters that I saw a real impact on my quality of life. I needed to just get rid of more before it really made my space less stressful and easier to tidy up so that I could spend more of my time doing things that I care about. And so if we keep using this excuse over and over again that this one item won't make that big of a difference, it will ultimately make a really big difference in the long run. So those are all lies that I've historically told myself. They even still come up in my head sometimes, and I try to combat them. And I'm sure there are others, so maybe I'll have to do a follow-up video at some point, but I would love to hear if there are lies that you tell yourself about your clutter or especially what you do to combat these thoughts. Because I think for me, a huge part of it is just reminding myself that there is a bigger picture goal here. And that's where the why of why you're pursuing minimalism or doing these declutters is so important. So that's really all I have for you today. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.